There you go. Oh, that's nice. Get in there good and deep like. All right, now can you get her? No, not me. Get her. I've got a new camera. We're gonna try this thing out. I've been using the same Canon camera we've been using for three years, but apparently Canon changed something because it will not focus anymore. Got the trucks moving. Dad and Jim are out here already. They're gonna be taking a couple loads. Morning, Jim. Morning. Morning, how you doing? Good. You want me to check the tires on the Pete and hook that up so we can move the trailer out of the way? Yeah, I think that'd be good. And then also, did you ever check that the floor that covers up the sump where the chain is and the stuff that runs the sweep in that bin? No. Better make sure but I think, out. yeah. You think it is? Yeah. Okay. So we're pulling out of a lot of bins right now, but we had to fix the flighting inside here to make sure it would get in and drive the gearbox that runs this power sweep. So this is actually 2019 corn in here. This is older corn. If you watch grain markets at all, you know that corn has gone up quite a bit in the last few months. Unfortunately, this was all marketed. We had it hedged on the Chicago Board of Trade, so we had a price locked in several months ago, long before the recent rally. So we're still hauling in at old prices, but we had a little bit of profit margin in there when we sold it. We were happy to sell it. We're just missing out on today's today's big prices. Hopefully, we'll capture some of that going into next year. Thankfully, the sun is shining for the first time in what feels like three months. More tire pressure checks. I hate doing it. I never get to quit doing it. Looks like we could crank it up maybe, just a hair. Last load is loaded? Yep. Good. Now it's not too difficult to hook up a trailer, mostly airlines and electrical, but these glad hands, or the airlines, we like to lubricate these before we actually hook them up. And of course for a tough job like that, to provide some lubrication and prevent some corrosion, the toughest part is always deciding if I want to use the straw or just flip it down and get a little more of a spray in that regard. I think we'll go with the straw down this time. I like to apply it liberally. This stuff just helps prevent corrosion in there and helps lubricate the seals a little bit so when you hook them up you don't twist them or anything. But before I hook up the electrical stuff, I want to clean that up too because those plug-ins are actually kind of a mess. I honestly don't remember if I ever filled you guys in on any of the details of what happened with that truck, but if you remember back a few weeks ago, we had a fuel issue. It ended up being a unit pump, which comes into play at the high fuel pressure end of things. It's part of the injector system. It had hammered itself out on the inside, so there's a check ball with a spring in there that had pounded itself out. In the meantime, we had them fix a coolant leak that we had on it. And then while they were digging into there, they found out that the turbo was actually going out it was on its way so we had them fix it right get it done you know it is what it is it's one of those things so we had a very high repair bill on that truck but it's a nice truck it's a good truck runs like a top now so one of those things cost of business let the air out of there i will we got this shocker hitch for pulling the seed tender and some other stuff around here it's got an airbag in it you gotta let the air out when you take it on and off, but then it takes some of the hammering out of the trailer. 
It's all adjustable. Seems like a nice piece. We'll see how it works. Come on. Way off. You know us millennials, we get used to a backup camera for hooking up trailers and then we get in a vehicle without one, we're just not capable. You see, that is much better. I'm gonna take Thunder to town. It's only about nine miles up the road, so I'm gonna take him to Midwest Machinery, the deer dealer in our area and have the def tank filled up because now we actually have a couple of machines with the 9570R and the 8320RT that are gonna be running def. So we're gonna to need to keep some def on hand up until this point, we really haven't needed to worry too much about it, but with a couple upgrades, now we need it. How does the Hagen piece look? Um. It's, it's dry. Everything down there is dry. It's all dry. Everything down there? All the fields? Yep, all the fields. Everything's dry. Okay. What do you so, think we do then? Uh, we better get the digger moving? I think so. Um, and I forget about this, but when I finished Laxons, it looked like one section of drag was doing something funny. And I looked and I folded it up, but I haven't actually unfolded it and looked at the section. So maybe we should look at that. Yeah, we better take a peek at that. I don't see anything on this end. We should spin their rollers and see. Make sure they're spinning. Yeah. Those sections settled out, but everything seems to roll. Is it roll, Rhiannon? Yeah. We got a rock in this one. Look at that. We're going to need a scientist to get that out. Oh, we didn't find anything on the digger, so Dad's just going to take a look at it. Are you okay? What are you doing taking a nap right here? Didge? Is it okay? Hey, what do you think? Is it okay? All right, you take it to the doctor then. That'll be good. I'm gonna back the planter out. We're gonna put seed in the planter and the tender, I believe. We got Jim who's gonna come back out in a little while, run the digger. I'll take the rock picker to a place. We have a plan. It's there, we have a plan. It may not work out, but we have one. <laughs> Now there's two things I want to test on this planter before I get it out. The other day we actually did 120 acres with it. Off camera because we were doing all our infield adjustments. But I've got two small issues with it. Number one, the left marker doesn't want to work. And I don't know why. Number two, the second thing I want to check is the alignment of the closing wheels right behind the seed trench where it drops the seed in. The first thing I'm looking at here is this button, this switch to let it know the winglet is down, which it is depressed. I don't know why it doesn't want to move down. What do you think on the closing wheels? I think rows seven and eight need to be moved over to the right and maybe 22. And maybe 22 and like that one, there's only one wheel pushing it shut in there too. So it used to be that we could take a 19 millimeter wrench here and loosen these up and there's a slot inside there that you can tip it side to side. For whatever reason, I don't know if it's because we have, this airbag squished funny right now, but if it's because we have the pneumatic closing wheels on this one or what, but instead of doing that, we, we can't do that because the spacer inside there's different. So we actually have to get up underneath and loosen where the casting gets bolted to the row unit casting. It's annoying, but we're gonna, we're gonna adjust a couple here and see how it goes. Most of them are pretty doggone close, but none of them are perfect. See, 
Now I got them both loose, but the second one fell really loose instantly, so I don't know if it sat in the same spot or not. Okay, and I, it just moving like this is all you can do? Yep. That's but it moves in the front and the back. It's as far to the right as it will go. Well. Oh, there, it went a lot further, didn't it? So it looks super crooked from down here. I'm looking, at, you can see the lines where it was in the front. I'd say tighten it up there, this was off a ways. Was off a ways? Yeah, this one. Now can I fire it up? See, now you can fire it up. All right, then I'll drive ahead. I'll go real slow and you can kind of walk behind the ones we changed and see. Yeah. See what you see. Yep. See, see, see. Hard to tell. It moves around a lot when you're planting. Yeah. You go over a little ridge. Yeah. It'll go clear to the left side and then it'll go clear to the right side. And then it'll be in the middle. It probably doesn't do that nearly as much in the field because it's a lot more mellow conditions, huh? You're rolling faster and more mellow, but I, from what I see, it, the road, it's clear to the left and clear to the right, but most of the time in the middle. Okay. So it's hard to tell, but I think we're probably going to be as good as we can get. Yeah, conditions are going to vary a lot. Most of them looked really close the other night when we went planting. That's why we kept going, but okay. we should bring that impact with at least in the field and check it a few times. Yep, yeah, we should. It's almost maybe going to take somebody walking behind it a little bit. I think so. We're in the field and condition. Yep. We decided we are going to set all the closing wheels once we get out into the field. I'm playing with the camera here. So for now, just leave her there for now. We're gonna load the planter up with a couple different hybrids. We'll put one hybrid in each side, that way we can compare them. We got a 94 day maturity and a 95 that we're gonna test against each other. We got one side full here, as you can see. So this is one hybrid. There's a 95 day maturity in there. We will be filling this one up with the same 94 day hybrid that we had in there before. This auger works really nice, augers it right up. The powder that we put in out of that pail that you see is what's on my hand here. It's a graphite talcum powder mix. It just goes on the seeds to lubricate the seeds as a dry lube and then that way all the internal parts the moving belts, the bowls inside the uh, row units, the air lines, everything has a dry lubricant on it inside the planter. And since I'm still getting used to everything else for the first couple of times this year, I'm gonna do it this time without worrying about the camera because I can't seem to keep everything else straight. We're all loaded up. I will fold this thing up and then we'll figure out where we're going from there, what exactly we wanna do. Onyx is coming out picking rocks with me. You ready to do this? Yep. He really just wants to talk about who the Vikings have drafted. Mm -hmm. Mostly. Mm -hmm. Alright, you tell me where they're at. Some up there. This way? Yeah. Did you dig this half or did Grandpa dig this half? Grandpa dug this half, but I dug up here. You dug the other side? Rule number one at the rock picker. When you see wet area like this, mm -hmm. you just don't need to go anywhere near it unless there's a specific rock you can see that you're going for. Or your gym. Or your gym. Sorry, Jim. There's no reason to get the rock picker stuck or compact the soil any more than you have to, so we just stay out of the wet spots with the rock picker. Same with the roller. There, there's one I'll grab. Just a little guy. If I can get to it. Five to four, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you good, yeah. We're up on Laxton's right now, and I just, we pulled in the south side by Doug's driveway there, and there's definitely a strip from the digger, pretty bad. That's strange, isn't it? Is it, okay, I wonder if it's just on the end roads, or is it looking in the stupid in the whole field? 
Yeah, we're going up the west side now, headed up towards the highway, and it looks really good here, but we'll see as we work our way east. We just turned on the north end by the field approach there, and where you lifted the digger up before you folded it left a pretty good pile of dirt, so it's almost like the baskets were dragging. I don't know if you had something plugged or what, but keep an eye on it. So far, there are much, much less rocks in here than I thought there would be. Down. You must have smaller legs than me. Yeah, forwards. Forward. There you go. There. I'm sitting left seat. Onyx is in control. Fortunately and unfortunately for Onyx, we're just not finding many rocks in this field, which is kind of strange because I know there's a lot of big buried ones in this field. Gonna practice on a little guy here. It's a little tough for him once we get the seat down and far enough ahead for him to run the brakes. Pretty tough for him to see the rocks. Down a little more. Another. Drop it down another. There you go. I'll kick it in there. Oh, there you go. Other way. Pull it back. There. That was a good trick. Oh yeah, look at that monster. Pull back. Yep, pull number two back. There you go. Beautiful. Raise it up though, you're plowing dirt. There. I lost my co pilot. His mom had to come get him, take him to hockey practice. See, here in Minnesota, we play hockey year round, it just never really stops. But there wasn't many rocks in that field, so we pretty well cleared that out. I'll give Dad a call. See if he wants a rock picker down at that other field. I'm guessing he will because we'll probably go wide open at that other spot. We've got about eight, nine hundred acres in one area, five miles south of here. So a little rough at the intersection. Five to four. Yeah, go ahead there. We got Laxons done. There were hardly any rocks there. We just picked up a bunch of small ones. Onyx got some practice. Um, what do you think the plan should be now? You want me to run this thing down there? Um, yeah, you probably don't have a way back, so if you bring it down here, I suppose I'll need a pickup for a ride sometime, so you can come down and get me and bring me back, and I'll take the pickup down here. Here's the plan we're going to roll with. That field we just picked rocks in is only 48 acres, so I'm going to take the planter, run over there, knock out that 48 acres so that it's done, and then I'll grab a pickup and go pick up Dad after I finish that, because it's 5.30 now, so it'll be... 7, 7.30 by the time I get up there, plant it, and get back. That'll work. Before I roll out, I figure I better swing by the house here and check and see if either of the girls want to join me or not. Because planting's a good time. And their brother's gone at hockey, so maybe one of these two girls will want to join Dad out in the field. Isla just got her bedroom all painted up today. Painted teal and uh, off teal? Darker teal? Dark. Looks like the girls are going to keep setting up the bedroom. Blue. She wanted, Blue. Um, these um, turkey feathers. Those are pheasant feathers. Chinese chicken tail feathers. Yeah, she wanted them shoved in here. Oh, they look Bunny nice. Ears. This bunny ears. Bunny ears? I cut it so it's sharper. So yeah, I wanted my makeup to look like a bunny. So you, neither of you are going to join me in the planter? I mean, not today. Not today. Okay, well there will be room another well, day. I you do what? Come in. Are you coming today then? Yeah. You changed your mind? Yeah. You ready to leave right now? Yeah. Nothing better than having the family join you in the fields. Okay, are we ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. Say, I spy with my little boy. Something that's green and the 320 horsepower. Oh, the how tractor. did you know? So it's not it's not hydraulic hose. It's not like it's coming from the true set. Okay. 
Okay, well, I'm not to Laxton's yet with the planter. You want me to turn around and head down there with a the pickup? Yeah, is it, so it's engine oil, you think? It's hydraulic, okay. All right, I'll, uh, I'm gonna turn around at the church here and I'll head back to the yard and then I'll come down there. Bad news, girls. Sounds like grandpa's tractor broke down, so I gotta go see what's going on there. So, we'll turn around at this intersection, head back home. Mm -hmm. So we can come out later, right? Well, I don't think there will be a later at this point. Yeah, but we can still come out some other time. Some other time, we yes. We have a while left we, to plan. We have a while left to plan, that's for sure. Okay. Yep, towards you. Pull hard. There you go. All right, sorry you couldn't go longer, girls. Bye. Bye. We were gonna plant 50 acres and get a bunch of tillage done. The girls were coming with. It was all gonna be so perfect until something broke. Such is life, such is farming. I think I'll probably just drop thunder and we can take my pickup. Just seems like the fastest thing to do right now. Thunder. I'm, I'm sorry. Thunder. Everyone's got the same thing going on today. Tons of stuff out. Every year it's kind of like, wait for it, wait for it, go! I guess the truck was listening to me. I think I found him. What did the code say? It derated the power right away. And then it said check in or check hydraulic level and then by the time I shut it off. We had a mess. 50 feet it was saying it was low. <clears throat> Everything looks pretty shiny underneath there. It's all wet. It's everywhere, huh? <clears throat> yeah. Good thing we just had it washed. Uh is it this one? There and then this littler one? Yeah. I think it's up in there? It, yeah, when I shut it off, it, where these two hoses run, it kept dripping underneath them. Now the sun's getting harder to see. But Dad's climbing up in there now. He's going to fire it up and we'll see if it happens as soon as it's running or if we got to turn a hydraulic on. Or maybe I'll just get hosed. Hey, kill it! Oh! Oh! Oh boy, uh, oh man, I can't see for sure. We might have to do that a couple more times. Um, I know the area it's come, coming from. It is one of the two hoses you mentioned. It is one of those it's, two? It's either this big one or the medium one, or there's a big uh, fitting going into the filter underneath it, but it's spraying mostly Mostly forward and kind of against the wall where the hole goes through the frame there. Yeah, okay. It's spraying right there and it's just... It's I could hear it in the cab. Say, so, you know, the tractor running wide open and yeah, the window you just, set, you couldn't hear it. But You just lost a gallon right there, I bet. I bet so. So it's definitely in where we thought it was. It's coming from either one of these two hoses or down here around this filter. But it comes out so fast that you can't tell for sure where it's at. You can't... I mean, you can climb under there, but you're going to have a mess. You, you wanna... have to take your clothes off to get in the pickup. Okay, yeah, fire it up for a second, and then I'd say shut it off after two seconds. Okay. Yeah, I can. it's definitely coming out of one of those two hoses, but it's, it's almost like one of them blew out and is punctured, but they're facing that wall right under that hole. Yeah, this rear end's uncomfortably warm to lean on. It is. But I'm gonna see if I can. Oh man. I can't. 
Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, got it. You found the hole? Yeah. You can feel it? I can't see it, but you know, you can feel the braids coming through. Yep. They'll stab you a million times. It's been rubbing against the bracket or the wall? Um, probably, yeah. Yeah, so it's the smaller one of the two. Oh, that is, everything I touch is warm. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a number back there. I just got to get it turned so I can read the whole thing. Someone put that on there pretty tight. Maybe tighter than I can get at with a crescent wrench. Mm. Up in here anyway. Oh, I can't even budge it. <sighs> And I can't get my head around behind it. Uh, there's a bigger line that goes into the front of the pump. This one comes out on a on an aluminum block, like a multi-way. A lot of lines go into the pump, I guess, to answer your question. Hey, Daryl, there's no RE number on it. It's a it's a dash 12 Eaton line. Couple of things here. I just switched cameras again, so let us know down in the comments which one you like better. If you like the first one we use most of the day better, or this one. So far, this one's easier to hold, and I feel like I'm not as tight in on the shot, and I kept bumping the focus on that other one. The update on that tractor is that for that part number, that big hydraulic hose that we blew, the nearest one is in the state of Washington, which is, I don't know, 1,500 miles that way. So what I'm going to do is go out and set up the Mendeco storm that we've got here. This is not the one we ran last year. This one is six feet wider. It's a 33 foot and it's got the concave disc blades on it. Other than that, same thing, same model. Obviously the 9570 is new to us. It's used, but it's new to us. Good tractor. Never run it in the field yet. Let's go have some fun. <laughs> First thing I want to check is front to rear. We're definitely a little lower on the front right now. I can see that. So that's easy to adjust from inside the cab. There's just a control box in there. So I will want to raise the front a little bit more on this gauge right there. I'm also going to check and make sure my gang angles back here. Hey, Anna, you got cockleburs on you. Here. No, let me get them. Let me get them gonna make sure my gang angles are pretty close to where I want I want them from five roughly five six degrees so that's what they are that's what they look like from in the cab they're a little difficult to see in the cab I'm gonna make sure my harrow sections are adjusted to where I want them that's exactly where they were on that machine where we liked it last year so I think we're pretty close to starting here got the auto steer kicked in Let's click this thing down. We should be set for roughly three and a half inches. Pick some speed up here. I'll be back with you in just a moment. I never got my speed going like I'm supposed to, but what I wanted to do first was come back and check the depth. There's definitely some moisture in the ground here. Boy, it's definitely drier just a few miles south of here. A little lumpy, a little wet here. Not terrible. How's the depth? Look at that sunset we're gonna have. Anyway, the depth seems all right. I'm gonna get some speed to it and see what happens here. See what it looks like after we can hit our eight, nine miles per hour. There's our, well, 8.3 miles per hour, 8.5. I'm trying for nine. The tractor doesn't quite want to do it. Honest chasing us around. There's a little more dust flying. There's that sunset. All right, let's see what this thing was doing at a higher rate of speed for what it's designed for in a little bit drier ground. This does look a lot nicer. Definitely a little drier up here on the hill. This is my first time running this articulate tractor. This is ours, we bought it used. First time it's been on our fields. We used to have articulate tractors, a lot of them. The last one we had was a 9630. Actually just had it four years ago, I think. 
Um, we just started getting into tracks about when my YouTube channel started taking off. So we've run a lot of articulates. Here's what I don't like about them. Around here, as sticky as our soil is, and as much moisture as we get into it, look at the tires on that thing. That thing is all tires, which is good for flotation, but when you're pulling a 33-foot implement, it also means that you got tires on like 70% between between the implement and the tractor, 70% of the land you're covering. And this is what I'm getting a lot of, and I hate this. This is a bad deal. When I can look down the row and I can see where that tractor drove and where those mainframe implement tires were, I don't like that. I want it to all look like this right here, like it does here and not like it does right there and right there. I mean, overall, it's doing okay. Um, I'm gonna try and get more speed out of it. I think it should be a little drier out here, but we got good conditions. It doesn't get much drier than this in the spring for us. It'll be drier tomorrow and the next day. I'm not sure what to do here, but I think it's set. I think we're, I think we're real close on what the implement itself is doing. I've been playing around with it a fair amount here. I've messed with the different gang angles because you can change them independently between the front and the back. I put a little more in the rear. Um, I changed my depth some. Overall, I'm just I'm not liking the way that it's looking behind those mainframe tires. It's just leaving some lumps there. You can see there's compaction. The seed bed that it's leaving behind isn't quite as good behind those mainframe tires there. It doesn't fill in as nice. It's not as smooth. And I can't pull it as fast as I want to. I thought 570 horse would be plenty. This is definitely a hill here, but I'm trying to pull it nine miles an hour, but uh, I'm getting more like eight, eight and a half, which is still fast, but not as fast as I wish I could try. I'll check one more time here and see what it looks like with those adjustments. See right out here on the outsides where we're not running in a tire track, it looks fantastic. But then you get in here and you've got these lumps, a lot more of these going on that aren't terrible, but you can see the inconsistencies through there. Hopefully that shows up on the camera compared to right here. I mean, I'd say that's a pretty big difference. Look at that tire track right there. Over here right next to it, this is where we ran the field cultivator like a week ago before we even had it set exactly how we wanted it and it was even wetter then than it is now and you don't get any of that now some of that's the tractor that 9560 the RT being on tracks a lot of it's that but this looks so much more consistent I was hoping to work this hundred acres tonight I just wanted to get this done so we'd have something to plant into tomorrow morning right away I still have that 48 acres but I'm not going to do it. We're going to get that hose tomorrow morning, hopefully, and, and get that other tractor up and going. If we don't, we'll at least get that thing started quick and out of the way and hook this tractor to it and then see what it does if it's more of the tractor or if it's more of the weight on the mainframe of, the, of, that, of that implement there. We'll see. I mean, spots look good and other spots I don't like. Sure seems to me like more and more I look at it when I see how nice it looks like outside here I think it's those great big tires on that tractor I really do but whatever you know we got enough of a video here sun's about gone I don't know we'll see you guys in the morning thanks for watching keep it between the rows <laughs>